What's up my producer friends, I'm David with AnotherMonsterProductions.com. In this video I want to show you Scalar 2. I get a lot of questions from beginner producers struggling with music theory and struggling with how to come up with chord progressions, and this tool can really help with that. It's almost like a cheat code. I don't recommend that you get Scalar 2 and then not learn any music theory and just use this as sort of like a crutch. What I would recommend is that you get this plugin and that you still learn, you know, the basic music theory so that you can understand uh, what you're doing anyway. But this plugin, whether or not you know music theory, is an extremely helpful tool. If you're struggling with any sort of creative block and if you're just having a hard time starting a track or coming up with a good chord progression, this plugin is absolutely amazing for this. It gives you so many more different chord options than what I would think of uh, if I were just coming up with a chord progression myself on the keys. And in just a second, we're actually gonna dive into Scalar 2. I'm gonna show you exactly what I would do to use this plugin and how I would go about creating unique chord progressions. So let's go ahead and jump in. So this is what Scalar 2 looks like when you first load it up. And I'm using this inside FL Studio. You can use any DAW you want. It works on Windows or Mac. And this is made by Plugin Boutique. So if you wanna get this plugin, you can just go onto Plugin Boutique get it. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video if you guys want to get that. And this plugin is resizable. So if I go down here to the corner, I can click and drag, make this whatever size I want. So it goes all the way down to about this size, and then I can make it much bigger if I want. I'll just leave it right around there for now. And one really cool feature that I like about this plugin a lot, uh, and this is especially helpful for beginners who are sort of brand new to music theory, is that if I have a MIDI keyboard hooked up to my DAW, and I decide to like actually play on my MIDI keyboard so I can play various chords and it's actually going to tell me what chord I'm playing at the time. So I could play like a C major. It's going to tell me what chord it is up here and then I can turn it into a C major 7. So I think that's a really cool feature because if you do have your MIDI keyboard hooked up and you're trying to kind of learn chords and learn music theory a little bit more, uh, this tool can just tell you exactly what chord you're playing and that can help you out a little bit. But how I would go about actually creating a chord progression in this is um, it kind of tells you what to do here with the instructions. So the first thing you want to do is analyze what key and scale you're in. Um, you can import it directly into this and do it that way. But what I usually do, I'm starting from scratch, so I'll just hit the record button and I'll just kind of play something. So I'll just play the exact same thing I just did. Okay, so then I can stop that. So now I have these chords. And as you can see down here, I have all these scales which just popped up that it could potentially be. So what I actually just played was a C major chord, so it is detecting a major scale. I actually probably should have done a, a minor chord instead because I'd, I'd rather do like a minor scale, but that's okay, we can kind of pick. Um, so the first minor one that comes in is E minor, so I can choose this, and you can see, usually I stick to either major or minor. Some of the modes can be a little little wonky if you're trying to use those chord progressions, but it's totally up to you. I mean, feel free to experiment with this stuff. But as you can see, you know, the major chords are gonna be happy, light, bright, and the minor stuff is gonna be more serious, sad, emotional, sentimental, stuff like that. So I want more of a sad, emotional chord progression right now, so that's why I'm gonna choose the E minor scale. And as you can see down here, now we have some chords to choose from. So uh, if I change this, it changes the chord progression. So these are just your basic triads right now, and you can kind of see the Roman numerals. So these relate to each Roman numeral of the scale. If you're not really familiar with how this works, I do have a music theory video, which I did fairly recently. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video to that video if you guys wanna check it out. It'll get you caught up with the basic music theory knowledge that you need to know to understand what I'm talking about here. Uh, and it'll help you out with kind of understanding this plugin a little bit better, I think. So maybe check that video out after you're done watching this one. But now I can go ahead and click this here. And when I click that, it's gonna highlight these notes here. So these notes are gonna to relate to the chords that are down here. Um, so we have you know seven different chords, so I can play a C. So those are just our basic triads, you can see that here. So I can change this to sevenths if I want. Ooh. 
but then on top of that, you know, you also have your ninths, elevenths, thirteenths, which can get really complex and jazzy sounding. Kind of once you start going past ninths, uh, it it starts sounding a little crazy. But we also have different voicings. And this is where things get really cool because this unlocks so many more options for us to choose from while we're creating our chord progressions. So I can go to like voicing two and here I'll play it again. So now you can hear those chords are played in different positions on the keyboard to give it a little bit different vibe. So I can mix and match. And down here, I can create my own pattern. So let's just, let's just start messing around and see what we can come up with. Okay, so I like those chords. Okay, so and then I can click down here and play the chord progression. But what I actually want to do is I want to change the timing of this. So I can go into edit and I can uh, go to playback timings and I can change the duration of these. So I think this one needs to be one times 1.5. Let's listen to this. And I actually probably want the tempo to be a little bit slower here. Let's try like 125. Uh, and then so every other one I'm going to make uh, 1.5. And you can go in here too and have you have a bunch of options. So we can change these. All right, let's listen to that. Okay, so that sounded pretty nice. I can get rid of the edit. I kind of want to change out one of these A minors with a different voicing option. So I can go into, I don't know, let's try voicing six and let's see what this A minor sounds like. So that A minor is the same. Let's try seven. Okay, we'll try this one. And I can drag this over on top and it will get rid of that one. So it will replace that A minor. So let's listen to this now. So it's not quite right. It's not the not quite the right voicing. And keep in mind that you can obviously change this stuff later when you drag this into your piano roll uh, or your you're messing with the MIDI later, you can kind of change the voicings there, but it's it's pretty cool that you can do this in this. So let's try voicing one. Still not quite happy with that. Try this one. That, that, I like that voicing. Let's experiment with this B. That's a maybe. Let's try voicing four. Let's try this one. So try adding that one there. And then maybe I can change this last E minor too. Just have it lower. Okay, so that sounds pretty good to me. I like that chord progression. Another cool thing that you can do within this plugin is you can change the performance. So I can click that so it's on. I can go into expressions and I can change this to arpeggio or strumming. So arpeggio, let's hear what this sounds like. I could also do strumming, which is just gonna give it more of a sort of played out live feel.
So I think for this chord progression, that's probably what I'm gonna go with, but I just wanna show you some other options here. So we also can go back into expressions. We have different performances, phrases, and rhythms. So these are all different music theory terms. Adagio has to do with the tempo, so this is kind of a slower tempo, um, and we have a bunch of different things. So I could just pick a random one, and you guys can obviously experiment with this on your own, but let's take a listen to this one. So that's pretty cool. And as you can see, I mean, we have tons of different performances in here. Uh, espressivo just means expressive. So we can pick one of these. Let's try, I don't know, this. So that's pretty cool. Let's go in here to phrases. We'll try some of these. That's pretty cool. Uh, if we replace this with like, you know, I don't know, some sort of synth sound. Let's try, um, try square saw, see how this sounds. It's kind of cool. So one thing I haven't mentioned yet is that we do have built-in sounds within this plugin. So you can use this for MIDI purposes, and you can also use this as an instrument plugin too, which is pretty cool. And the, the sounds are great. I mean, the, the one that I was using, the felt piano, it's a really great sounding piano. I like this a lot. Uh, let's mess with some of these other ones. So I really like these phrases a lot. Um, let's try just like this one here. So I mean, pretty much what this plugin can do for you is if you are not really that good at the keys, it can turn you into like a prodigy. You can come up with amazing chord progressions. Uh, so I mean, just uh, amazing stuff. This, this plugin is really cool. Let's go into the rhythms and I'll just mess with one of these. I'll try piano. So it kind of creates its own unique rhythm there. Um, so tons and tons of options for you to play with there. Now what I'm gonna do here is go back into just strumming. You can go random. So it creates a little bit more of a random strumming pattern there. Uh, so you can mess with the strumming pattern if you want. You can change the amount, so medium, fast, random, whatever. Lots of options to mess with here. Now, I can also go into humanize and I can change the velocity, timing, or both to kind of give it more of a human factor. I mean, it already sounds pretty, pretty good, but let's just click both and we'll see. I mean, it's, it's pretty subtle, but it just makes it sound a little bit more realistic. So you can kind of hear the timing there, how it's, it's you know, subtly taking it off the grid a little bit uh, and just making it sound a little bit more human. So when you're done with all this and you've, you've got your chord progression, you like it, uh, what I can do is I can go ahead and save this and you can, you know, save it as whatever you want or I can drag it. So I'm going to go into my piano roll here and I'll go ahead and get Scalar back up and then I can just drag this directly in here. So now I have my MIDI and it drags it in with, you know, all the velocity and basically everything we did within Scalar is now in our MIDI. So I can use this in with whatever instrument I want. Um, I don't have to continue using it within Scalar, although that's what I just did. So now I can mute that. Let's go ahead and kind of take a listen to just the pattern. So I've talked about this in the past in other videos, but what I like to do is when I'm creating tracks, I come up with a chord progression first, and then I use that as sort of a foundation 
to build off of that. So whether or not I'm coming up with a melody, I'll use the chord progression. It just makes melodies so much easier. Uh, I'll use it to kind of figure out the, the groove or the drums that I want, what type of drums I want with that melody. And obviously the instrumentation plays a big role in that as well. But I really think that starting with chords is a good place to start. And if you're struggling with starting at all, this plugin can really help a lot. I only recently got this plugin and haven't even had that much time to mess around with it but I know that I'm gonna be using this plugin a lot for chord progressions. Uh, it's just an amazing plugin. So as I mentioned earlier, you can get Scalar 2 on Plugin Boutique for uh, about 60 bucks. Plus you can read a little bit more information about some of the functions, what it does. Again, I'll be leaving a link in the description of this video if you guys do decide you wanna get this plugin. It will be an affiliate link, so I should get a small commission if you decide to purchase the plugin. Obviously that helps out the channel. So if you do decide to get this plugin, uh, please use that link in the description. And that's really about it for today's video. Hope you guys like this video. I know a lot of you guys have been asking about how to come up with chord progressions and just really struggling with this stuff. I think this tool will help you out a lot. So if you can't afford it, I definitely highly recommend it. Be sure to check out that music theory tutorial that I was talking about earlier in this video. I'll be sure to put that up on the screen now. Um, so you guys can go ahead and click that now. And then I'll also put up another video that you guys might be interested in watching as well. So click one of those two videos and I will see you guys in the next video.